Long Jack Dean, Tall Jack Dean, a uh, Western boy. He was widely acknowledged as the tallest man in the AIF in the First World War and it was a great, uh, a great uh, trick of his mates that they'd go off at various times when they were in the war and, and bet people over beers that there was nobody taller than Jack. So various people would come along and always Jack was the tallest by a long, long way. All of the important generals, both the British generals and, and uh, Australian generals that were at the first, at, at the Western Front, knew him as Jack and would wave to him and say, here are you Jack. William James Albert Jonas, yeah. he's got his records up here. He was in a Wild West costume, he was a sharpshooter, rider and wore a black cowboy costume and that's when I thought that's him because you look at the gloves yep. that's heavy duty gloves yep. and real guns well these guys we owe it to them is they're a cowboy um, that's I guess the simplest way we can put this um, the purpose of the presentation is really to put them on display the way Galloway took them on that day or that minute that second in 1916 before they went off to this great war where they thought they'd probably be back by Christmas and the photos were being taken as mementos for their family and their loved ones. We want to bring them back to life. We want to know who they were. We think that the fact that they laid underneath the house for 90 years and nobody knew they were there, that they had a story to tell, that there was something always special about the people in those boxes under that house at Weston. Every photo tells a story, but we don't know the story mm -hmm. of, every, of every photo. They were all stuck together they were very, very hard to separate. We had asked several people over the years, uh, look, we've got glass negatives. How do we separate them? What do we do? We want, we want to make them into prints. So what happens if we've got a brush and just cleaned all the dust off and then with heart in mouth, sat there and went like that to pop them apart. And it was like, oh, yes. <laughs> And one of our volunteers of the time, her husband had retired and he said that I have a positive negative uh, scanner, I'm prepared to give it a go. And he did. Cheryl, one of our workers, and Elaine worked tooth and nail separating the photos and her husband scanned them all. And as a result, we have several boxes now of readable glass negatives. The exhibition is going to be held in the Anglingham Hall in Lang Street, Curry. It's significant because it was one of the enlistment points of when people wanted to put their name down to register to go to war. This is one of our lost soldiers, one of the plates of the lost soldiers. Um, we need to know who he is, we need to know his name and find out more about him. It'll be very interesting. We've identified about 20 of the, of the 40 soldiers. But these magazines were adaptable. They might be able to say, hey, that's my uncle, and contact us. And then we'll do our best to give their uncle or their father or grandfather a thousand word history so that they haven't been forgotten. He didn't ever imagine that so many years later a group of no, people no. would enlarge them to an A2 size. Mm -hmm. and now we're trying to give each individual soldier a story yes. of a thousand words. Oh, the picture tells a thousand words.